Hi folks, uh, welcome to the first lecture of Bibliology class. We did not meet for two weeks. Uh, how have you been? Uh, I hope you are doing well. Um, before beginning the class, uh, we are going to meditate on Psalm 119, 17 through 24. Let's read. Dear bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I am a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your rules at all times. You rebuke the uh, insolent, accursed ones who wander from your command commandments. Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statues. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. When I first read this verse 17, I did not understand this verse clearly because it seemed that the author says that if God does not deal bountiful with him, the author will not live and keep God's word. But it does not mean that. Uh, in the verse 18, I feel that the author really wants to see the wondrous things from God's word. But what is the wondrous things the author is saying? Mm, it's maybe truth, right? The Bible is truthful and trustworthy. So, if we can get God's word, we can be aware of truth that we have not grasped uh, before. However, to get the truth from the Bible, our eyes first should be open. Of course, uh, these eyes in this verse are not physical eye, but spiritual eye. Simple human's eye is closed until he or she accepts Jesus Christ as a personal savior. Also, as much as our eyes open, we can get truth. So, I'm praying that our eyes open fully so that we can experience the truth. The word sojourner in the verse 19 means a temp uh, temporary dweller. This thought is very important for all Christians. Uh, we all are a temporary dweller, right? Uh, we live here on the earth only for a couple of decades at the longest. Then we will disappear from this world. Uh, we will leave everything that we have now. It's life on the earth, right? So we should seek the everlasting things. So what is that? It's truth in the Bible. In the Bible, there are a lot of everlasting truths such as God's kingdom, wisdom, salvation, joy, how to be satisfactory, and so on. In this meaning, the author eagerly seeks for God's word. I think that the verse 20 <coughs> is very beautiful rhetoric. If our desire and eagerness are too big, then uh, we become somehow exhausted and feel fatigued. Uh, for example, if you really want to do something, you may be exhausted due to the feeling. Uh, in this verse, because the author really loves God's word, he became tired. When I meditated on this verse, I looked back my life. Uh, if there has been the time when I felt tired because of the love of God and His Word. 
Uh, indeed, I have experienced the feeling that I uh, eagerly wanted to know God's word, who is God, what is God's intention to this world and my life. And what is the truth and so on. Uh, I want us to experience that feeling when we read the Bible. And we should keep in mind that as you stated in the verse 21, uh, God rebukes those who live from God's word. We should live in God's word. Otherwise, God will lead us into His world, especially if God's people go away from His word, God will take them again. But as we can see in the Bible, usually it is painful to go back to His, His, His word. So um, we need to live our life in God's word always, right? Uh, in the verse 23, Princess sit plotting against me means crisis because princesses are authorities. So this verse means that uh, even though crisis comes to the author's life, he will meditate on God's word. Why? God's word gives us true peace and happiness even in the difficult time. Folks, if you have difficult time now, just pray and read the Bible. God will give you the truth, to truth and peace regardless of your situation. Lastly, I would like to emphasize the verse 24. The author in this verse says that God's word is his delight. This means that the author becomes full of happiness when he meditates on the Bible. The Bible has such spiritual power because we can be full of the Holy Spirit when we read His Word. Also, the Bible is full of God's wisdom. So, when we face the crisis that we cannot know how to deal with it, uh, we need to go to the Bible and seek the wisdom from God. Then, God will advise us and read us in God's way through the Bible. This is today's meditation. Okay, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we appreciate that you gave us your wisdom through this meditation. Yes, you're right. Your word is essential for our life. So please open our eyes so that we can watch your beauty and truth and your wisdom. Please help us experience true peace and your love in your world. We confess that we are sojourners on this earth. So we don't want to put our hope in this world but your kingdom. We really want to see your kingdom through your testimonies. Your word is truth and our delight and our life, uh, our light. Uh, many people are going away from your word. I pray that they go back to your word. Also, I ask you that our students, Umi and Hannah, live in your word. They are studying about your word. I pray that this class helps them develop in their ministry and Christian life and faith so that their congregation uh, can also develop Please give them your wisdom. Through today's class, uh, may God be blessed and glorified. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, before uh, diving into today's class, I will give you some comments on your last exam. Uh, first, I appreciate for your great effort. I know that this course is not easy for you, so I praise you because you took the exam successfully. However, uh, to help you improve, I want to uh, advise only two things. Uh, first, you need to be trained to paraphrase what you learned. 
Uh, paraphrasing means rewriting what you learned with your own word. The reason why this is important in studying is that if you cannot say what you, what you know in your word, actually uh, it's not your, your knowledge. Also, if you don't uh, paraphrase in writing your paper, it will be plagiarism. Plagiarism is to copy others' knowledge. This is a so big problem in academic world because people consider plagiarism as a kind of steal. So uh, if you want to be more improve, improved, um, training is necessary. That is to rewrite and paraphrase in your, in, in your own world. Uh, second, I would like to give you some useful comments for getting good grade in this class and other class. Uh, when taking an exam, if you can be more engaged in the lecture, uh, in the class, uh, you can give professors a better impression uh, because uh, engaging the lectures uh, shows that the students have done their best in class. Uh, of course, it is also crucial to state your thought in your mind, but it would be better if your uh, idea is based on the lecture. Uh, for this, I have already given you my word that the exam is open book style, uh, meaning that uh, you can refer to the class note freely uh, when you are uh, taking the exam. So uh, you, need, you need to summarize what you learned in uh, every class. Also, if you cannot understand something in the lecture, please ask me. I really uh, love uh, your question. So I expect that you can be more improved in the next exam. Uh, OK, uh, now uh, we are going to leave what we learned in the last lecture. Uh, the reason why uh, review is necessary is that, as I said, this course is not that easy for you, while bibliology is very important in our ministry and faith. So I don't want you to be frustrated for the difficulty of this class. Uh, I will repeat uh, what we deal with in, the, in, in, the, in this class so that you can understand the class more uh, clearly. Uh, in the last time, uh, we studied three attributes of the Bible. Uh, remember? <laughs> the first two attribute of the Bible was necessity. The Bible is for Christians from the two perspectives. Uh, first, the insufficiency of general revelation. Second, our life. Uh, first, as we discussed in dealing with revelation in the second lecture, a general revelation is a revelation for all people, whether believe or uh, whether believe God or not. Uh, for example, things like nature or ethics or human mind are considered general revelation. Through general revelation, human beings can get some knowledge of God, like. God's existence. However, general revelation is insufficient in getting the spe uh, specific knowledge of God uh, in the Bible, like Jesus Christ, salvation, or God's attributes, and so on. So, uh, we need another kind of revelation. It's a special revelation. And the Bible is one kind of the revelation. So, to get God's truth, uh, we need the Bible. Also, to be a real Christian in our life, uh, we need the Bible. This means that if we are a real Christian, we would do the behavior of Christian. Uh, but where can you get the lesson about how Christians live? It's the Bible. Uh, because the Second Timothy 3, 15 through 17 says, the Bible is profitable for training, correction, reproof, teaching, so that we can be complete as a Christian. 
In this sense, if we want to be more mature Christian, it's necessary to read, meditate, and study the scriptures. Uh, this is a necessity. Uh, the second attribute of the Bible was inspiration. This is the attribute by which the Bible is distinguished from other books that you read. Uh, inspiration means that the Bible is inspired by God. The proof verse is the Second Timothy, Second Timothy, uh, three sixteen, where the Apostle Paul says that the Bible is breathed by God. The meaning of uh, God's breath is in, in the Bible is the Holy Spirit. Uh, there is, uh, when the human authors wrote the Scripture, the Holy Spirit supervised the whole process. Uh, in this meaning, the Bible is the book of uh, not only human authors, uh, but also God. The last attribute of the Bible that we dealt with in the last lecture was inerrancy. The attribute of the Bible is naturally uh, originated from the attribute of inspiration. Uh, specifically, as I said, the first author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not make a mistake, right? So, uh, in the process that the Spirit wrote the Bible uh, uh, through uh, the human author, uh, there was no error. This means that uh, there is no error or contradiction in the Bible from scientific, scientifical, ethical, and historical perspectives. So, the Bible is trustworthy. This is uh, what we discussed in the last uh, lecture. So, uh, today, uh, we are going to talk about another three attributes of the Bible. Uh, the first attribute of the Bible that we treat now is self-authentication. Uh, yesterday, uh, I discussed this issue with uh, one person in my ministry. His uh, question was this. There are so many religions, maybe uh, in Philippines as well. And most of them have their own holy scriptures like Quran for Muslims and the Buddhist scriptures and the Book of Mormon and so on. So, if the Bible is the only book of God, how can we know that? In actuality, in actuality uh, many people ask like that, why is the Bible considered the only book of God, although there are so many holy scriptures in many religions? This question is related to the attribute self-authentication. Uh, we can explain the attribute in the two ways. The first is the Bible itself. Let's read the Westminster Confession about the Bible's self-authentication. We may be moved and induced by the testimony of the Church to a high and reverent esteem for the Holy Scripture <clears throat> and the heavenliness of the matter the efficacy of the doctrine, the majesty of the style, the consent of all the parts, the scope, purpose of the whole, which is to give all glory to God, the full, of, the full discovery uh, it makes of the only way of man's salvation, the many other incomparable excellencies and the entire perfection thereof are arguments whereby it does uh, abundantly evidence itself to be the Word of God. Yet, uh, notwithstanding uh, our full persuasion and assurance uh, of the infallible uh, truth and divine authority thereof is from the inward work of the Holy Spirit and bearing uh, witness by and with the word in our hearts. The content of uh, the Bible itself is trustworthy and marvelous. Uh, as you know, the Bible consists of 66 
books from Genesis to the book of Revelation. And many human authors participated in this process of composing the Bible for uh, some thousand years. But all the books have the common theme about God. And there's no contradiction in the Bible. So uh, we can ask uh, how it is possible. Uh, the only answer is because God wrote this book. If one reads the Bible sincerely, everyone can reach to this conclusion. Also, uh, if people practice the lessons in the Bible, they cannot help but acknowledge that the Bible is truth because the wisdom and lessons lead them into the truth, true, true happiness and satisfaction. This is possible because the Bible is written by God who is full of wisdom. Also, unlike other scriptures in many religions, the Bible can cover all the scope of human life. It ranges from the life uh, on the earth to the life uh, in the coming kingdom after death. And it is too elaborate and delicate to fabricate. So, once we read the Bible honestly and sincerely, with whole heart, we come to realize that the Bible is God's word. But um, <clears throat> as you stated in the last part of the Westminster Confession above, uh, the more convincing uh, evidence is from the work of the Holy Spirit. That is, uh, when we accept Jesus Christ as our, as our uh, personal Savior and read the Bible, the Holy Spirit is at work in our mind, uh, his people's mind, and convince us that the Bible is God's word. This is most crucial for the authentication of the Bible. Actually, extra evidence is not necessary for being convinced about the trust to, tr trustfulness and trustworthiness because God gives his people that conviction. So, for example, uh, Christians don't need any scientific evidence or explanation for believing the, the happening in the Red Sea in Exodus, or the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, or the, the history city of Jesus' resurrection, and so on. Uh, it's because the Holy Spirit helps us believe those miraculous events without any evidence or explanation. This is called uh, the inward work of the Holy Spirit. That is, the Holy Spirit testimonies directly in our mind without any, any evidence. So, prominent theologian Louis Burkhoff says about uh, this issue, uh, what is the ground on which our faith in the Word of God rests? Or perhaps better still, by what means is the conviction respecting the truth of the special revelation of God wrought in our hearts? Uh, in answer to these questions, Reformed theologians point to the testimony of the Holy Spirit. The Reformers uh, derived their certainty respecting the truth of the divine revelation from the work of the Spirit of God uh, in the hearts of believers. We should bear in mind that the particular work of the Holy Spirit described by this name does not stand by itself, but is connected with the whole work of the Holy Spirit uh, in the application of the redemption road in Christ. The Spirit renews the spiritual darkness of the understanding and illumines the heart so that the glory of God is in, in Christ is clearly seen. The work of the Holy Spirit enables 
uh, men to uh, accept the revelation of God in Christ, to uh, appropriate the blessings of salvation, and to attain to the assurance of faith. And the testimony of the Holy Spirit is uh, merely a special aspect of his more general work uh, in the sphere of redemption. So in this line, according to uh, Berkhoff, the Holy Spirit illumines the uh, sinful mind of human beings. By this, human beings become aware of the truth uh, in the Bible that they could not understand before. Uh, this is the, the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit. By this work, uh, people can realize that the Bible is different from any other books. And uh, through this work of the Holy Spirit, people can listen to God's message for, for me. We will talk about this issue later more clearly. Anyway, uh, it is clear that there is a relation between the Bible's self-authentication and the Holy Spirit. And the second attribute of the Bible we are going to explore today is sufficiency of the Bible. Sufficiency means that the Bible includes everything that human beings need, such as God's glory, plan, purpose, salvation, and so on. The attribute also indicates that no more revelation is necessary. For more details, let's look at uh, the Westminster Confession of Faith. Uh, let's read. The whole counsel of God concerning all things necessary for His own glory, man's salvation, faith, and life is either uh, expressly set down in Scripture or by good and necessary consequence may be deduced from Scripture. Unto which nothing at any time is to be added, uh, whether by new revelations of the Spirit or traditions of man. Nevertheless, we acknowledge the inward illumination of the Spirit of God to be necessary for the saving understanding of such things as are revealed in the world. And that uh, there are some circumstances concerning the uh, worship of God and government of the church common to human actions and societies which are to be ordered by the light of nature and Christian prudence according to the general, general rules of the world, which are always to be observed. Uh, we need to analyze this article carefully to grasp the concept of sufficiency of the Bible. Uh, according to this article, first, uh, we know that the Bible covers everything in relation to God's glory, salvation, faith, life, and so on. Of course, this does not mean that there's every specific information about, you know, uh, like economics, uh, science, politics, ethics, and so on. Uh, for example, we cannot find quantum physics in the Bible, right? And the Bible does not say uh, what the capitalism is. Uh, but God sends His message to us sufficiently through the Bible. And on the biblical truth, we can navigate our life and seek the way of salvation and any general principles and wisdom of life that can be applied to many areas of our life, like, you know, um, economics, family, school, politics, and so on. Also, we can deduce something from the Bible. Uh, for example, Holy Trinity. You know, uh, there's not that word Trinity in the Bible. So, many people think that a Trinity is not a biblical term. But 
This is natural because in the Bible, God the Father, God the Son, and uh, God the Holy Spirit appear clearly, right? So as a logical consequence, uh, we can get that, you know, there are three persons in one God. However, as I said, some people, especially, you know, Muslims, do not acknowledge this truth because they cannot find this word in the Bible. So, uh, they deny the divine attribute of Jesus Christ, but uh, this is not persuasive or uh, rational. Uh, although theologians coined the term Trinity because they felt that they needed to explain this concept, uh, we can find the, the concept in the Bible clearly. Anyway, the bottom line is that it is not problematic to deduce and infer something from the scripture. Third, sufficiency, sufficiency of the Bible indicates that we cannot and should not add any other kinds of revelation. This is very important because in history, uh, there have been a lot of attem attempts to add something to revelation or claim that something is considered commensurate uh, you know, uh, with the Bible as a revelation. For example, the Roman Catholic declared uh, in the Second Vatican Council like this. The Church does not derive her certainty about all revealed truths from the Holy Scriptures alone. Both scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal uh, sentiments of devotion and reverence. So uh, in this line, um, the Roman Catholic places their own tradition uh, alongside the Bible as the same authority. Also, Mormon as the Book of Mormon to the Bible. Even in the Christianity, there are some groups claiming that God is still revealing uh, to this world, you know, uh, something today to his, his people. Uh, the New Apostle Movement, for example, uh, in, in Pentecostalism is one of the, the examples. Uh, these are all attempts to add the revelation. However, as we discussed so far, no more revelation is needed because the Bible is sufficient as revelation. But uh, what we should remember is that as discussed in, in the uh, attribute, self-authentication, uh, we, we, we need to be illuminated by the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. However, illumination is uh, different from revelation in that revelation is something new while uh, illumination is only to understand uh, the, the, the existent truth in the Bible. It is not a new information. Also, the concept of revelation should be distinguished from application of the Bible. Uh, as we discussed, the Bible does not refer to every problem in our life, such as, you know, ethics, economics, politics, and more, uh, you know, uh, specifically nuclear weapon or, or environment problem or weather change. Uh, there is prevalent uh, issue in this world. Uh, however, uh, we can apply uh, wisdom and lessons in the Bible to those problems. So, uh, on the basis of the Bible, we can make Christianity and something like Christianity and politics, you know, or Christianity and economics, or, or how Christians can establish our family as healthy family, or how we can date our partners, and so on. Uh, such issues are not something new, but uh, only application of the Bible to our life and this society. Uh, this is uh, sufficiency of the Bible. And the last topic that we are going to 
uh, deal with today is clarity. This attribute may confuse you because uh, we are not sure what the concept is. Uh, so uh, what is clear in the Bible? Uh, about this, the Westminster Confession of Faith explains well. Okay, let's read. All things in scripture are not alike plain in uh, themselves, nor alike clear unto all. Yet those things which are necessary to be known, believed, and observed for salvation are so clearly uh, propounded and opened in some place of scripture or other, uh, or uh, then not only the learned but the unlearned, in a due use of the ordinary means, may attain unto a sufficient understanding of them. Uh, so in this line, uh, you know, our clarity does not mean that we can interpret all parts of the Bible completely. Uh, there are many verses in the Bible that even, you know, our biblical theologians cannot get perfectly. And clarity does not mean that all people can understand the Bible clearly. As we talked about, sinful human beings cannot get any knowledge from the Bible. Uh, because their spiritual eyes are not opened. So, uh, what is the meaning of uh, clarity? It means that the Bible is, uh, you know, uh, clear in the issue of salvation. Because God wants to inform us of the way to the salvation, uh, we can find the way to God and the Bible clearly. Uh, if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, uh, whether we are well-educated or not. Actually, in many cases, even ill-educated people can understand the Bible better than well-educated people because, uh, as Jesus Christ said, the unlearned accept Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God with pure and humble heart. In this case, God reveals His salvation to these unlearned people. So, for example, uh, everyone, even those who don't read or write letters, can accept Jesus Christ because it's simple to uh, understand the cross of the Christ and his resurrection. It's not difficult to understand that. It is not academic, right? It does not require education, high education. It requires only our heart. However, this does not mean that we don't need to study the Bible. As I said, our knowledge is not equal. Uh, because the truth is a kind of information we need to study the Bible carefully. Through study, our knowledge of truth will become deeper and we can grow up spiritually. Uh, for example, to grasp the work of the triune God, we need to delve into the discussion of the Holy Trinity in Christian doctrinal history. Also, uh, through this process, one can get deeper knowledge of the Holy Trinity. However, even if we do not know that, uh, it does not influence the matter of salvation. We can be saved without that information. Uh, one more thing that we need to think about is that God gives us the chance to ex explore the Bible more. So we should do our best because uh, in the Luke uh, 12, 48, Jesus Christ says like this, verse 3, Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required, and from him to whom they in, in entrusted much, they will demand the more. This uh, verse means that uh, God will demand us more because God gives the precious opportunities to study God's Word, right? Uh, I want us to do our best in Christ. 
Okay, uh, before finishing, let's summarize today's class. We learned uh, three attributes of the Bible. First, self-authentication. Second, sufficiency. And last, clarity. Self-authentication means that the Bible is trustworthy word of God uh, by itself. We can be convinced that the Bible is the word of God in pondering on its practicability, majesty, integrity, and so on. But the most important factor is the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is at work in our mind when we read the Bible so that uh, we can be convinced that the Bible is God's word. This conviction is not explainable, but it's true. Uh, the Holy Spirit helps us to realize that the Bible is true as God's revelation. Uh, and second, uh, sufficiency. The Bible is sufficient in saving us. So uh, we don't need any other kind of revelation. Today, many people or group or religions try to add other revelation, but it is in vain. There is nothing com commensurate with the Bible. Last, clarity. The Bible is clear, so everyone can get the way of life uh, through the Bible, whether one is educated or not. However, to grow up in Christ, we need to meditate and explore the Bible because God will open our eyes more as we contact Him more. So we need to spend time as much as uh, we can in our, our situation. Okay, let's close. Please don't forget to submit class note by Wednesday night, okay? On time, please remember. Thank you, and see you uh, next Monday.